Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I woke up this morning with thoughts in my head about um, things I started remembering that I had learned, discovered, or uh, figured out many years ago that have to do with the, uh, the, the structural understanding of Gaia humanism. And I remembered a bunch of stuff. I remembered also that um, it, it wasn't three columns. I mean, it was three basic columns, but then I also realized that um, it's more than three uh, points or areas of, uh, of suffering or hurting or intense intensely occurring afflictions in humanity and that made me remember that uh, it's not columns as so much as they are um, um, how can I say this areas of I see them linear because they're aligned with the most suffering is identified and therefore the healing and optimization of that same subject matter or area would be sought to be uh, to be achieved and so it's a linear progression from identifying the hurt to uh, everything that develops in order to achieve its optimal healthy state and so I saw it as a meridian or a, uh, a, a line a vertical um, so column is wrong and anyways um, I, I just want to make this video really quick just to say that it's a uh, I'm in a process of formalizing development right now and so I feel uh, responsible for what I last left as um, video I know they're terrible I know that I'm really bad didactically I have no skills and plus I'm bilingual so I'm limited in in my use of vocabulary which is an interesting subject uh, about, about which, which I learned quite a bit. Um, but in any case, it limits me in my eloquence, in my vocabulary. Uh, I've never read much. I've, I'm a visual uh, baby, sort of say, uh, from the generation of, of people of us who grew up absorbing what we see and what we hear and, and all the, the new medias that have come about civilization so because I haven't read much I don't have a whole lot of vocabulary I have big words sometimes but I really don't have the refinement in the use of vocabulary um, but I'm bilingual so I have other you know bilingual people have other sensitivities and I was thinking this morning as I was preparing my coffee that uh, some that bilinguals for example tend to have uh, uh, more compassion they're not as condemning you know because we see our brain gets exercised in the perspectives of different cultures entirely different people and ways of looking at life and others through the minds of other people so kids that grow up bilingual they you find I think this is what I was trying to reconstruct with memory by observation and by what people have maybe commented about uh, in those situations that uh, you tend to see that they're not quick to um, to condemn and, and to cast out in judgment and blame um, and it's not because of anything that was taught and how they think or view or behave but it's because I believe the brain gets exercised in not putting going intensely all of reasoning in one direction but it's trained. Uh, it's edu it's uh, it, it grows up. Uh, it's shaped in um, in a way that is tends to consider. There's going to be other people subconsciously thinking. There's going to be other people that don't see it that way. That see it differently. That reason it differently. That have other ways of saying it. Uh, and so the brain uh, develops in a less condemning way. Anyways. So there are advantages for people who are bilingual, but one of our disadvantages is that well, the brain only has so much space. <laughs> I ended up making a video about 
about linguistics. Um, the brain has so much space that uh, only has so much space. It has a lot of capacity, more than as we know, uh, we realize. But um, uh, the what is allocated to the development of language and linguistics is is finite. And even if there's a lot more, it doesn't mean that we can just ravage it and do it. It means it's it's arriving at its extents and may be able to stretch a lot more. And this goes to say also for the capacity of the brain. We may be very capable of it, but it's an organism. So it means that it's organic. And it means that as we push further out into the brain, um, it's not just empty space that can be occupied like on a computer, like software uh, occupies uh, the hard drive or however <laughs> that works. But um, it, it, it tends to stretch and uh, still there is probably a lot more flexibility leeway <laughs> that we still haven't um, developed as, as, as intelligent thinking, reasoning minds. In any case, so I apologize for uh, my lack of, of language there and, and I just want to uh, express my responsibility for um, uh, being inconclusive with my last what actually ended up being not conclusively defining but I uh, may make a video soon where I'm explaining that it's more areas because I was thinking of obesity and really what it is, it's, I spoke of what the mind, uh, constantly permanent, unstable, unbalanced, uh, the coffee's coming up, uh, condition of the mind. I gotta go get the coffee. Condition of the mind, um, be, uh, given the, I've explained it already, the, uh, um, identifiably um, extra intelligence that uh, we that defines us as unique among the, uh, the the rest of the social intelligent beings on the planet um, and um, as a challenge is something beautiful that we should be grateful for uh, because of all that that means for us as human beings in this very dangerous, volatile, suffering, toiling world. Um, but, you know, it also means we, we don't know if, uh, we don't know if our creators actually, it's not that they just wanted to make, have a species with an altruistic gift or give mankind an altruist, altruistic gift for his uh, better existence, but it could be that they actually have an idea of what God has an idea of what they want us to be and that means that uh, it's about having capacity to do things incredible things be something um, and as a consequence it creates uh, symptoms or we could call it symptoms or you can call it um, I'm absolutely not going to make this a long video. Um, you know, the, the uh, consequences are that we still can't handle it. We still obviously end up hurting ourselves with this intelligence. And so um, rather than, um, I, I'm going to call them points of greatest... Um, harm or critical uh, self-injury or symptoms I'm not sure what, I, what what they should be called but these are not columns these vertical uh, lines of uh, intensity are I call I I, um, I named them uh, homosexuality war incarceration and I should add, and I'm, I'm right now I'm looking up natural forms in nature uh, to decide if I think they should be five, you know, and a lot of what I think derives from five fingers. And there is pentagons, I mean, there is uh, the polygons. When I, I did a search on the internet, I didn't write down polygons, I wrote down 
I wrote down I got pentagons, I wrote down polygons, and uh, I get the five, which is what I thought, the five-sided polygon. Um, the other day I saw something on six, but in any case, so I think it's five that will be these vertical spores of, of, uh, of um, matters that concern humanity. Uh, the f fourth one should be obesity, obesity excess, uh, you know, uh, too much, and there are other qualifying uh, definitions, adjectives, subject matters that uh, hang around these uh, singularly labeled points around uh, war. There was a lot to talk about and different, but looking at looking at humanity from a different angle, there, there's a lot to, to talk about about uh, what it means or what it signifies or what it brings up or what it talks about when we talk about homosexuality, incarceration, or war. And so the same thing for obesity. Um, and the fifth one, I think, is going to be neglect, uh, abandonment, meaning that we just can't keep all of us, somehow we can't keep all of us together as a single uh, collective. We end up um, going with a certain number of people and people that we really cared about or meant a lot or, or were important to us or we had a great thing going or uh, were part of our world and we were happy that they were part of our world or what have you. They, uh, they get left behind. Children get abandoned by their parents. Uh, we um, think that things are not important and we let them rot, dry up, <laughs> die not have medical care, not have friends in their lives, not have a healthy, we, uh, we abandon, we, we neglect, we can't seem to take care of, uh, maintain everybody on the same plane. And it directly has to do with having a capacity that is greater than another part of our more basic, uh, uh, original, natural animal, whatever you call it, uh, being that we are. You know, always talking about the relationship between these two, and um, so I think it's going to be five, and I'm going to draw a diagram, and I also want to investigate because all of this is being drawn from account of natural uh, points or areas or a, a number that is derived from nature, uh, because it's the best we can do. It's the best we can do is kind of look at what we have look at nature and see how it, and then from there organize uh, something that will have to do with seeing what is happening to us, identifying where we're harming ourselves, and create areas of most importance for mankind, and therefore they may lead to in this, a similar group of institutions, uh, political institutions that we have today, like, uh, you know, we have education, we have, um, what are the ministries of government? Um, Education. There's a mil I didn't want to say military <laughs> um, provision, building, uh, building construction, transportation. Um, you know. Anyways, the ministries of government would it be expressed by uh, these numbers that I'm drawing from from nature. And so uh, this this another thing, uh, the the rainbow flag, which I talked about in another video symbolizing the um, the universality of our applied uh, administrative or organizational aspects of civilization uh, which is where it traditionally came from you know the all the everyone not it was never about I talked I made a video about this already it was uh, Sort of sequestered by the by the gay community and become a, a flag that means homosexuality, but reality, in reality, the symbology of the rainbow is about all you know. And we actually do have this in America, where the rainbow family is not about being gay. Is actually, and they have a little. When you go to rainbow gatherings, they have also the little rainbow hut or something. I've never been to one, but I know about it, and uh, I. As I was listening to these stories about rainbow gatherings and uh, asking some gay guys how uh, how they're you know it was you could clearly understand that the rainbow is interpreted for its original um, it's, uh, and and in in that is included people that have decided to make their lives 
I thought homosexuality, okay, or, or live homosexually, however you want to say that. So going back to the rainbow flag, which is representative in my view, as, a, as far as flags go, or symbology, perhaps of Gaia humanism, or, uh, yeah, and um, it has a certain number of, it doesn't have, a, actually, if you look at the rainbow, it doesn't have a, it, we have symbolized it, and it is represented by a number of colors, so I believe it's seven, I'm not sure, um, it may be eight or nine, I'm, I'm completely uh, not sure of that. But in any case, my interest was to look at each color of the rainbow. Oh, what I wanted to say was, if you look at a rainbow, you see that it starts over again, like uh, it gets to the uh, the last color, and then the, the the first color starts over, but with a slightly different hue, but it seems to repeat. So there is a, a perhaps an identifiable number of, um, of, rain of colors in the rainbow. And what I want to look at also is the what in the atmosphere or what in light or what in combination of light and atmosphere produces what chemical what compound what gases produce it produce that particular color and i'm interested in identifying that as elements and make doing something with it and so there will probably be two num organizational numbers the one that is um, there may be several layers of identifiable numbers um, you know, one that identifies what is most urgently something that we need to see cannot occur. And the idea, the, the, the idea of uh, Gaia humanist uh, political philosophy or social civil uh, philosophy of, of discourses is not to say, okay, war, homosexuality, um, incarceration, obesity are things that we must we must do things for them to block them to not happen no they are actually like where the light goes off but we it's not not where we work at it's not where we do things about where we would work at are in another group of uh over uh, juxtaposable uh, over imposable uh, superimposable superimposable uh, number of things that may be um, child, child development, uh, uh, development of, of, of moral uh, of, uh, of capacity, of uh, personal achievement capacity, or um, uh, development of uh, personal capacity, you'd say. Um, you know, different areas I can't think right now, but then we've if these areas that we first identified as where humanity is hurting the most or expressing its most uh, intensely counter nature or against itself uh, afflictions are lessening or are, le are, 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 are stabilizing into levels that are, um, you know, where, uh, savable, where people are not condemned for their entire lives to be hungry or to be obese or to be only homosexual or to be incarcerated their whole lives or or to be uh, at war for a hundred years but instead achieve something that we can determine okay there's only so much that this humankind base uh, animal creature can achieve even with this amazing capacity that has been endowed by uh, creators or by God or um, why the the why it seems that that is the case because <laughs> a lot of things prove it a lot of things tell you this is intentional you know but in any case that's not what this video is about i wanted to talk about the uh, um ex the uh, the organization the structural uh configuration or or a uh, way of developing Gaia humanism and it was that it's not about three columns, but it's about perhaps five or maybe six, but I think it's five. I'll, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna look at natural forms in nature. Identifiable problems, then um, identifiable specified um, points along, perhaps aligned with those five, but um, I'm also looking at how numbers change at levels. And I have a sequence of numbers that are 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 um, that uh, exp 
express level source. So you have, I've, I've, I'm even conceived of a model. And I, I say these things because it is very interesting to develop with the software and stuff that we have now on, on uh, computer technology visual moving models and you see them on YouTube people are making beautiful things that are actually about expressing nature and I wonder if we can in an animation uh, if I wish I was I had really become good at this in school uh, incorporate um, places where you see okay zero is the unknown zero is what would what is the, the universal or the cosmic reality of our creators or God which we don't know, obviously. Um, one is still a non-physicality, non-physical concrete number. It is one, in, but there isn't an actual one because there isn't one of anything in the universe. Anything that you look at, the universe has created more than one. And so there isn't, it isn't really a starting point. And this goes into a little bit of the, of Gaia, of uh, humanist philosophy, where philosophies of uh, life um, would be less about the individual and I, I, I am important and my ego and it actually in the physicality of living beings and humanity it starts with two as if two was the number one was number one because uh, we are inseparably a unit as a species in two genders in two genderal forms um, Mankind is man and woman as one species, uh, one humankind, and that is the actual one. That is our starting, so that the so, so that we would always be seeing so that both male and female, and this doesn't lead to what this civilization has created a symmetrical, um, symmetrical identical equality. You know, where if I if I nail with a hammer, the girl also has to nail with a hammer. You know, no. It's, it leads uh, somewhere new, unexplored, because making the distinction that we're inseparably indivisible too, but two nonetheless, um, as, as, a, as a first physical uh, anything that we can talk about, because uh, specialization leads us to see how each one is. And how each one is will be a multitude, a whole world of subtle, sometimes equal, sometimes seemingly equal, um, sometimes very different, absolutely very different, um, definitions and characteristics and explanations and descriptions that will lead to the realization, the manifestation of truly our two uh, perfectly definable in each one and it's it's it should it would lead to when we will finally discover ourselves as a species, and it will lead to how uh, we 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 do things together, and it, and that will lead to seeing how we virtually can do almost all the same that the other one does, but differently. Uh, the woman will do it one way in a certain amount or with this approach, and the man f f does more of that part of it, concentrates more on on this is is in, it does it in this way in some places uh, we'll see hardly any women in some places we'll see very few men or uh, very few women what I'm saying is that we don't know this world yet and um, it's hard to imagine that we would because we're so um, uh, I, don't, I can't find the word right now but you know there are quick imaginative images like so we'll have does that mean that we'll have two types of every profession um, you know and we're kind of trying to do that and it, it won't be necessary but it maybe will lead to that w women architects will will approach the building of of the world of cities of of homes of office buildings or, uh, a certain way and we'll uh, but instead of being women over here doing their office buildings and, and their urban developments and men over there, it will be them working together except that they're the female architect and the male architect that produce a project together, uh, a world we don't know yet. So this understanding of, of, um, of a world uh, of, of um, identifying that fundamentally inseparably uh, 
at the very essence the existence of two clearly uh, not interchangeable, <laughs> you know. Oh, I, I think I'll go have an operation and become the other one. <laughs> no, it's not like that. Uh, will lead to um, some. Okay, I'm sorry, but you know, like I said before, you gotta have a little bit of humor before, uh, otherwise we all be we all be crying in misery. And, and the people that most take it to heart and appreciate what we have done to humanity would just be destroyed in anguish and torture tormenting suffering so there has to be a strength in 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 doing things with grace with cheer with with humor with laughing at, uh, not laughing at but if you don't have a certain amount of this ingredient in the in the healing the identifying of pain healing and reconstruction of of uh of civilization uh you we would be we would be floored in, 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 in tormented anguish and pain because we've been killing our children for 2,000 years. So it makes no sense to be only, um, only uh, how do you say this? Uh, oh, Jesus, I don't want uh, ster uh, sterile, uh, um, secular, no, I can't, I can't come up with a word. Uh, matter of fact, um, uh, unemotional, I don't know. I can't come up with the right way of saying this, but it makes no sense that we uh, are only, uh, you know, on the job about it. We have to do it with living, uh, present moment reality, and that means having a certain amount of. Uh, because there's going to be arguments, anyways. People, <laughs> people will say, you know, how can you be that way about it? And you have, you have to be a human being in order to do even the the most un monumental. Uh, task of reasoning that could involve a civilization and uh, anyways so after two um, three uh, um, three speaks of a more complete humanity now uh, but we're already in the physical the physical started with two now three means the offspring you know it's the the, the entire humanity three represents the child that represents the unknown person on the other side of the world um, uh, it is saying the whole collective of humanity instead of the individual because two now says the individual three says the whole collective uh, and then comes five and so see the order is different and if you want to explain people want to say why are you going by a different order that is not the established already well because we invented one two three four five six seven eleven twelve you know it's uh, nature doesn't have walls and defining separating lines um, concrete spaces you know and finite uh, nothing you know it's like a organic creation is organic so if we're going to have something that is instrumental um, in, in uh, developing a new political philosophy or understanding what is actually happen happening with humanity and in civilization very likely we will have um, s under using the numbers that we have, sequences and structures that don't re correspond to the laws and to the rules of in which they were uh, used, meaning the Roman numeral system. Um, so yeah, so using zero, one, two, three, and five, um, I'm the idea is to create. Uh, in depending on what we talk about, uh, understanding what we need to heal, where we're suffering the most, versus what are the se the areas of uh, of civilization, of society, of nation that would be uh, concentrated on as ministries, let's say, of of administration or of uh, work, of intelligence, of intellectual work. Uh, there could be also five, or it may be. Uh, I think it cannot be three, as I woke up realizing this morning, because obesity is obviously, you know, we ravage the our, our breathing jungles. <laughs> we ravage our oxygen tank. <laughs> you know, so we can't go that way. We can't continue to just have no, no, no restraining belt <laughs> there. Uh, and it, it, we can't have children that, that are obese at age 10. Absolutely not. So... Instead of, but like I said, it's not something that we're going to say, okay, then 
educate your children to not eat. You know, it's not about pouncing on that point. That is, it is seen as a symptom, as something. Now we have to go back to the things that lead to that part of that vertical line of subject matter uh, to make it balanced, normal, um, and there's discourses along those lines. And so where the things get influenced, so uh, for example, uh, to not make everything about soci in, in society about food and have um, uh, leeway industry, uh, out of control industries that promote and push food down your throat and billboards and easy 10,000 billion different color packages on supermarkets that children only have this information and then when parents are not there or what have you or whatever unbalance may occur in civilization the first word place they gratify a sense of whatever nature still you have to love yourself you have to you know take care of yourself uh, subconsciously will make them find satisfaction or gratification in food so we there we would have areas that we can specifically create administrative law um, ways of organizing and distributing parameters and limitations for industry marketing uh, things that we already have we, there, that's where the clay is that's that's those are the shapes that we have created that we can add water to and and, and squash again and rebuild and, and mold the, uh, the the running of countries and of society uh, which are not this which could be three could be five or um, you know um, and perhaps should be five because but it's not it's, it's, it's like you work in one area and then you look to see if the five points are becoming better and now there's now homosexuality occurs you know like that everybody maybe tries it maybe never they never did uh, but it's not needed by the by the mind in any way as it's not uh, obsessively uh, given space for by society and culture as a, a, a heart a place to go uh, forget about all your <laughs> problems, you know, and create recreate a mini world where nobody tells you anything. You can have all the money in the world, and no other men are too afraid to say anything about it. You know, anyways. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, and then all the other you go, we we check to see if uh, if if those things are becoming standard. What what makes everybody happy, you know. I don't. Anyways, I can. I can almost feel. I can almost feel that uh, I touched on something a little sore there, but um, so that is the 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 the, the, the mo the modus operandi of structuring Gaia humanism, uh, having levels and where we work at things, and then we we also have the the number of things that we're seeing and cannot go on so intensely out of control and where is it going to lead nobody has any idea uh, or maybe we well we are actually very worried in the world but we're, we haven't put uh, ha we haven't gotten a grip on a way that we could comprehend how to uh, heal what some of the things that are afflicting and hurting us some of which we're seeing but we also have to have a number of things with this we cover the suffering of human of humanity and uh, civilization with this number of things it was three uh, with my last video now it's five um, uh, and then work on the things that are most important for the collective to stay optimally healthy and so you have the human body you know its sustenance nutrition what it learns because we're talking about society first always what it learns what it educates what it teaches, what it's educated by, what it teaches, what information, okay, that's touchy. Um, then um, the building of its, of its uh, space, of its shelter, of its, of its stability, uh, its home where it will raise its child. Um, then, um, so far it's okay, education, da da da. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, I just had it. Oh, mobility is something that uh, seems to be out of our hands, and this 
gift of intelligence that we're endowed with now compared to um, other animals, other social animals, seems to really, really be into uh, moving us quickly, you know, doing things. It, ha it probably has to do with this capacity that now we can think so much in such little time, and so we want to get to where things happen and are thought quickly, and so it results in <laughs> cars, airplanes, supersonics, going to Mars. So this would be perhaps another... Uh, we don't. We think transportation. Do we really need that in the government? Well, it's not just about administrating a city. It's about seeing how humanity is affected by its uh, great intelligence, by its greater intelligence, um, and that means that we would pay a look at what transportation, which has then become something introduced by our greater intelligence, does to um, to the species. Do we really just want to get out of bed and sit in a car, get moved from one chair to another chair to another chair to another chair until we dumped on the bed again? Uh, I don't think so. And so, for example, there's another area. And so we would have sectors um, that, uh, that would define the ministries or the houses. And so those would... Uh, seeing how those perform, or it's all hypothetical now, structuring, de designing how those would perform should lead directly to there no longer being obesity, uh, homosexuality, not a thing, you know, as, as a behavior, human sexuality, yeah, at first, but it's no longer socially installed for life in millions of people. Uh, <laughs> uh, then we have well, incarceration no longer occurs because we, we now first we produce less of what would lead to people attacking their own species. Uh, and second of all, when there is a certain area of, uh, of the population that perhaps for a symptom of our intelligence or just a combination in their brain happens that they must insist on, uh, on something, well, we would, have, we would facilitate something that encourages that a certain way and, and has them learn to that the stupidest thing in the world is to hurt your own species, your own brother and sister, you, yourself, or you know, the people that have been there in the world to make the world that you enjoy. There's a, a blind spot that you don't see, and, but we would always have a space. What I'm trying to say is that we would always have a space for the non-geometric in, in the understanding of uh, human collective and that means that there would be always something that has to do with um, instead of jails and punishing laws something that has to do more with education which already took care of the vast majority of uh, almost out of control problems that maybe perhaps we don't know the future but maybe this will lead to always a, somebody that goes and kills somebody you know, I, instead of happening, um, you know, 40,000 times out of uh, a population of a million, maybe it happens, uh, it will happen uh, 100 or 200 times out of a population of a million. I think that is still too high. Don't pay too much attention to my numbers. But uh, the point is that we have to also be organic and saying we don't know exactly what this greater intelligence results in, in its relationship with us, with man, with mankind's basic. For, I, I wish I had a word. I have to find words. I have to find vocabulary words to make these uh, crazy dissertations a little more uh, flow, <laughs> calm, <laughs> calm and comprehensive. Um, so yeah, and so then that would. Uh, or, and, and you know the, 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 the good part is that we already have expressions that we want to do this we already talk about rehabilitation and, and some, in some cases they're mediocre and half-assed in other cases we really had a great idea but none of them really ended up creating a, a nation uh, a political philosophy a political party a school of thought that is well contained in a and something that really prescribes the whole shebang for 
human civilization. You know, there's a lot of books out there, and in, in, in the states we have. Oops, I'm about to get emotional here. <laughs> in, in the states we have um, a lot of libraries where um, we only collect books that have to do with um, the esoteric, with with people who are really, really putting their minds to getting to this place we haven't gotten to uh, yet or and, and collecting trying to collect the best of what is out there in uh, religions and spirituality and political creative philosophies and raising children and art and um, all these things are uh, anyways okay I, I gotta explain now why I got emotional uh, because there was a a very uh, nice bookstore uh, around the corner from my mom's house when I was living there for a while uh, called the Bodhi Tree in, in, uh, in West Hollywood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, <laughs> West Hollywood always there. You know? um, uh, yeah, always there, always there, and uh, always a subject there. In life, anyways, you know, every time I was about to, like, anyways, um, and uh, um, it's the most harmless of uh, of all. And yet, okay, anyways, so at the Pody Tree, they played be they played beautiful music. Kind of sad because they closed down. That's why I got emotional. Uh, I, I heard they closed down. They may they may have they may be somewhere else. But I later saw that these bookstores are uh, are all over the world. Actually, there's bookstores that try to do this. Uh, they're not they're not interested in, in bestsellers, although you find bestsellers there. Anyways, okay. So enough of that. And uh, thanks again. I almost it's a little shorter. It's only forty two minutes by the time I close this. But I needed to make this video because I didn't want to leave it the way I did. Uh, I did sort of assert all these conclusive uh, uh, um, <laughs> in instructions, <laughs> ideas on how to um, understand uh, uh, the, the structure of hot guy humans. In reality, it's some, something that we need to be many to t actually talk about it. It's, it's not going to happen with a few people putting videos and silently through... Uh, the waves of the internet uh, giving some ideas or, or putting a concept out there for the first time or anything it's not gonna hold unless uh, like everything in humanity we actually have a physical place where we meet and we we see the concept we talk about it and we continue to develop it until we get our first foundational bricks set down um, and and, and and that's it. <laughs> okay. Have a good day. It's morning for me, and I'm gonna go get my coffee now. Uh, aloha, uh, ciao, hasta luego, and have a good day.